In the previous lessons, we looked at the sine law. That was in sections 3.1 and 3.2. And in section 3.3, .3, we investigated the cosine law. Uh, they were both used to solve for sides and angles in a triangle, depending on the different properties that we were given. In 3.4, we are going to look at a combination of them, and it's basically not going to tell you how to solve. It's just going to tell you to solve a problem. So we're going to have to, uh, as you can see in part A here, we're going to have to recall when to use the sine law or cosine law, and it's not going to tell us which one to use when. So this first question basically says, for each triangle, determine if you could solve for the indicated angle measure or side length, and if you could, state whether you would use the sine law or the cosine law. So if you are looking at this first example, you can see that we're asked to find the side, find the side length AB, and we're given the other two side lengths and the contained angle. In this particular case, we would use the cosine law. That was one of the properties that if we're given, we can use the cosine law. If we're given two side lengths and the contained angle, we can solve for the opposite side of the angle. So in this case, the answer here would be we would use the cosine law. Okay, next problem. In this problem, what you can see is we're not given all three side lengths or two sides and a contained angle, so we are not using the cosine law. Uh, and the rule for using the sine law is we must have an angle and its opposite side. If you investigate this problem, you will notice that we do have a side and its opposite angle because this is technically 90 degrees, which is sometimes hard for students to identify. So we've got an angle and its opposite side, and we're solving for an angle for which we have its opposite side. So this is a classic case of solving for an angle using the sine law. Okay? Uh, in the next example, you'll see here that all we're given is two angles, so we could, in this case, find out the third angle, if you'd like to. Uh, your third angle would be 67 degrees. However, to solve for this side length, we do not have enough information. Just to have three angles doesn't help us. There's no property that we can use to solve for a side length if all we're giving is the angles. So in this case, we just can't do it. Okay, and the last example here is solving for this side length. Uh, it doesn't look like we can use the cosine law because we're not given two sides and a contained angle or all three sides. And for the sine law, you might think that we cannot use the sine law either because the only side we're given, we don't have the opposite angle. However, if you investigate a little bit more closely, what you could do in this case is first of all, find out that this angle, which I'm labeling in blue, is 52 degrees because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and then we could since we have an angle in its opposite side we could then use the sine law to solve for side AC okay so this is a classic sine law case of solving for a side length but we first of all had to identify what angle A is but then we could use the sine law okay now we're going to get into some word problems. We're just going to do one more in this particular lesson. Uh, and here's the problem. It says the world's tallest freestanding totem pole is located in Victoria, BC. Manuel wanted to determine the height of the totem pole and recorded the following. He walked along the shadow of the totem pole and counted 42 paces. So he walked up this slight incline and measured 42 paces. Okay. Next what he did is he estimated the angle of elevation of the sun was about 40 degrees. So this angle with horizontal is 40 degrees, and he observed that the shadow ran uphill and estimated that the angle the hill made with horizontal was about 5 degrees. So this angle right here between horizontal and the slope of the ground was 5 degrees. And it says, how can Manuel determine the height of the totem pole to the nearest meter? <clears throat> now, it's a little bit of a complicated problem. We want to determine the height of the totem pole. In some cases, what you might want to do is just start somewhere, or... To give you an idea, if we are looking at this triangle here, uh, we are missing too many parts to solve for the height of the triangle. Uh, we have the height, but we don't have the opposite angle. Okay, So we are missing some parts here. Or, in other words, we could have this side 42 but we're missing its opposite angle. So we're missing a lot of parts in this triangle, if this is a triangle we are to use, in order to solve for the height of the totem pole. So what we might want to do is just start somewhere. And that's what I always suggest on word problems, is even find out things that you don't necessarily need to know. Uh, so in this bottom triangle, which I am going to highlight in blue, which is not the best color, but this triangle here, 
we've got two angles. We've got a 40 degree angle and we've got a 5 degree angle. So the remaining angle in this triangle, or this obtuse angle here, has to be 180 minus 40 minus 5. So in that case, it is 135 degrees. Okay, And that is useful because then we can determine that this angle here, because of angles on a line, is 45 degrees. Okay, Because these two angles here, which I'm now circling, have to equal 180 degrees because they're angles on a line. Okay, And furthermore, we know that this angle here, angle B, would be a right angle with horizontal. So if we've got a 5 degree angle, then this remaining angle in this triangle has to be 85 degrees, okay? Because they add up to 90 degrees, the 85 and the 5. So if you follow my logic, and we're getting actually close to the answer, again, I just stated, why don't you just find out what you know? If you follow my logic, then we can actually find this angle C up here, because inside this green triangle that I highlighted at the outset of the problem, we know two of the angles. We know a 45 degree angle and we know an 85 degree angle. So if I go ahead and sub is subtract those from 180, so 180 minus 45 minus 85 degrees, that is 50 degree angle. So this angle up here is 50 degrees. So at this point in time, whether it's useful or not, we have found out all of the angles within all of these triangles, which may or may not be useful. In this case, it is useful because as you can see here, what we have inside that green triangle is an angle and its opposite side, which indicates we can probably use the sine law, and we can because what we've got here is the angle that's opposite the totem pole. So we know that that angle is opposite the height of the totem pole. So in this case, as you can see, if we have an angle on its opposite side, this is a classic sine law case solving for a side length. So if we set it up, it's going to be h over the sine of its opposite angle, 45 degrees. If you forgot how to solve the sine law, you're going to want to look at the 3.1 and 3.2 lessons. Uh, is equal to 42 over sine of its opposite angle, sine 50. So in order to solve, we're just going to multiply each side by sine 45. So what we have found out is that h is equivalent to this entire boxed <clears throat> Part there. So again, press equals multiple times. So 42 divided by sine 50 and hit equals. And then multiply that by sine 45 and hit equals. And I have 38.8. And that is the height of the totem pole. So 38.8 meters. Or it says to the nearest meter. So that would be 39 meters. Okay?